Hey guys, um, we're gonna look at 10.5 today. So we're looking at permutations, combinations, and then we're revisiting the binomial expansions uh, that we had done earlier in the year. So first off, just um, some vocabulary. Feel free to um, get this from your textbook as well. But uh, a permutation means an arrangement. How many different uh, ways can um, the people be arranged on a bench? Um, Etc. So the order matters. Um, one, two, three, and two, one, three uh, would count as two different permutations, even though they have the same elements in the set. Sometimes um, we can ask for distinguishable permutations. And so that means order matters, but you only count the arrangements that are unique. So you discount the swap of indistinguishable elements. For instance, if I had um, one, one, two, three, as my elements in that order, one, one, two, three. Then if I switch the first two ones, then I still have one, one, two, three. So that would not count as a distinguishable permutation, even though technically they're in a different order, but because they're both ones, um, they would not be a distinguishable permutation. And then uh, next is combination. So for combination, think uh, how many ways can you choose uh, that many elements so the order does not matter? Uh, how many different ways can you choose the, I don't know, the two desserts that you want for the week? Uh, the order that you say them does not matter, you're just choosing those two desserts. Um, so that would be considered a combination and not a permutation. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is I've given you um, here's six different uh, examples, and I would like for you to mentally uh, put them into whichever bin they go, permutation or combination. Pause the video while you do that, and then we're going to start and go over the answers in three, two, one, zero. Let's check your work, see if you, um, see if you were correct. So arranging people for a photo matters, right? The order would matter. Electing officer positions for a club, even if you would pick the same three people, um, there's, because president and vice president and treasurer are three different offices, uh, then the arrangement or the order of those people would matter. And outcomes for a horse race also, um, whether you are going to uh, win or place or show, right? That's first, second, and third place, the order of that would matter. Combinations would be picking toppings on a pizza. It doesn't matter if you say you want pepperoni and onion or onion and pepperoni, you're gonna get the same pizza, I think. Um, electing board members for a club. If it's not uh, positions, if they're just, you're a board member, you're a board member, you're a board member, then it doesn't matter the order. And the number of free throws made out of 10 attempts. I'm also not checking, what well, did you make the first one and the second one? Uh, the order wouldn't matter that you would make those free throws. So those would be combinations. So here's an example uh, of permutations. How many ways can Ashley, Brie, Karina, and Dania be arranged for a photo? I know it's permutations because I see the word arranged here, so the order would, would matter. And we did um, problems like this in 10.1, which was just kind of the overview of all of the probability chapter. So method one would just be to list, right? I could have uh, Ashley, Brie, Karina, Dania, or I could have Ashley, Brie, Dania, Karina, or I could have Ashley, Karina, Brie, Dania, or Ashley, Karina, Dania, Brie, or I could have Ashley, Dania, Karina, Brie, or Ashley, Dania, Brie, Karina. So there are six, um, there are six ways that we just have uh, Ashley on the left-hand side. So if there are six ways that can have Ashley on the left-hand side, then that means there's also six ways uh, that Brie could be on the left or six ways that Karina could be on the left, et cetera. Um, and so then that would be six ways uh, and then times four people. And so you could say, well, that would mean that there would be 24 uh, total ways because there would be six ways here and that's just with A on the left. And so we would just multiply by four and not actually list out all 24. The second way to do that, though, is to use the permutation formula, and to do that requires the use of what's called a factorial. And so uh, 
a factorial here, not only am I exclaiming that I want you to be able to use a factorial, but the factorial symbol is an excla exclamation point. So what an, the factorial symbol does is it takes the number, for instance, if I said four factorial, and it takes then and it multiplies four by three, by two, by one, and then it stops when you get to one, because if I multiplied by the next one, um, that would be zero, and then the whole thing would always be zero. So think about it, that doesn't really make much sense. And so that's what the factorial uh, symbol means. And so if, if we're going to use factorial, then we can just say that this is going to be four factorial ways, because there would be four different choices for who I want to put on the left, and then after I pick that person, there would be three choices for who I want to put next, two choices for who I want to put next, and then by the time you get to the, um, to the rightmost position, then there would only be one choice left, so you just multiply by one. Four times three times two times one is also 24. Now, it gets a little bit uh, more interesting. If I want to arrange, let's say I want to arrange three pieces of art, so the question says, in how many ways can I arrange the wall art? If I arrange three pieces on the wall, but I have five pieces to choose from, two of them I'm not going to use. So I can do it similarly, like I was talking about the last one, by kind of looking at the spots that I would have. So for the first spot on the wall, I would have five choices, right? I have five pieces to choose from. But then once I pick that one, then for the next spot, I would have four choices, and for the next spot, I would have three choices. So I get that there would be 60 different permutations. Um, and so that's one way to do it. Now that's going to coincide or match with our permutation formula. So for those of you that are like, I just want a formula, here it is. The symbol for this would be N permute R. So N and R are both subscripts, but the N is before the P and then the R is after the P. And you would read this as N permute R. And that means what are the different, um, or how many different ways can you arrange R elements from a set of N? So for this example, this would be from five, I would like to permute three. Um, that's how that would, that's how that would read. And there's a formula for it. And so the, the permutation formula says that that's going to be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So let's see how um, that relates to this problem. For instance, if I wanted to do five permute three, then that would mean I'd have five factorial on the top, and then five minus three quantity factorial at the bottom. So five factorial means five times four times three times two times one, and then five minus three, which is two, so two factorial would be two times one. And then if I simplify that, then the one and the two would both go away. And so I'd be left with the five times four times three, which is 60. So same answer as before, but this is using the formula to do that. Um, you can use whichever you prefer, whichever makes uh, the most sense to you. So then that's permutations. Now let's do some distinguishable permutations. For distinguishable permutations, um, we were just going to do them for words here, and in this case, I have five independent elements in the word phone. So that would just be five factorial. And you can figure out that five factorial is five times four times three times two times one, and you can multiply all those in your calculator. You can also get there um, by using the factorial button in your calculator. So the factorial button is found by turning on your calculator and then hitting math left four. So you're gonna hit the math button. And then if you hit the left arrow key, then that takes you to the probability menu or the probability tab. And then it's number four that takes you to the factorial. So if you try that, you can see that five factorial is 120. 
Um, if you don't have your ca graphing calculator on you, you're welcome to just multiply out five times four times three times two times one. Uh, however, for the word apple, um, I would have five factorial because the word is five letters long, but these two Ps, it won't matter if I flip them because uh, that would give me the same result as in it would be indistinguishable if I flip them. So because there are two Ps that are the same, I'll divide that by two factorial. So then that would be 120 divided by two, which would be 60. Now for the word committee, let's count the letters in the word. So that's what, six, seven, eight, nine. So that would be nine factorial. But then let's see what duplicates we have. We have two Ms, so I'll put two factorial here. If there were three of them, that would be three factorial on the bottom, but there's only two. Um, there are two Ts, so I'll stick another two factorial on the bottom. I need to divide those out because they, they won't count as actual distinguishable permutations. And there are also two Es, so I'll go ahead and divide that out as well. So I'm gonna use my calculator for this because I don't know what nine factorial is. Um, so if I hit nine and then math left four to get that exclamation mark, which means factorial, I get that nine factorial would be 362,880. And then two factorial is two, two factorial is two, two factorial is two. So I'm going to take that and I'll divide by eight because that's two times two times two. And I get 45,360. Um, and it's kind of cool that we can see that there are 45,360 ways that I can just swap and rearrange the letters in that word without obviously listing them because listing them is not something that we would be doing. Next, um, we just have a little story problem. Shouldn't, shouldn't be that bad. Let's read it. For a town parade, you'll, you will ride on a float with your soccer team and your girlfriend is going to be on the school choir float. There are 12 floats in the parade, and the order of the parade floats is random. Find the probability, so now I'm not just asking the number of ways, it's asking the probability that your float will be first and the school choir float will be second. So probability is really similar to what we were doing, uh, except that we're going to just take each probability. So if your float will ride first, that would be a one in 12 chance that your float would ride first. And then for uh, your girlfriend's float to be second, that would be a 1 11th probability because there would be 11 floats left, right? After, after you've already said, okay, well, your float would have to be first, then that float would have to be second. And so if I just multiply these, I get that there's a 1 in 132 probability that your float would be first and the school choir float would be second. All right, now let's do some combinations. So for combinations, um, there's also a symbol for that and a formula for that. So in this case, I'm getting a three dip ice cream cone at the local creamery. Uh, how many ways can I choose? Three ice cream flavors if there are seven to choose from. So I could just start listing them. The order doesn't matter. I don't care which dip is on the bottom and which dip is on the top. So I could just start listing them, but that's going to be way too much work. So I'm actually going to say I want to do um, seven and I want to choose three. So the permutations are a capital P for combinations. It's the same uh, setup, it's just a capital C. And the formula for N choose R, that means out of N elements, you're going to choose R of them, is really similar to the permutations formula. It's N factorial over N minus R factorial. But then since the order doesn't matter, for combinations, you also have to divide out all the ones that would just swap the order. And so that's another R factorial of them. Um, and I'm not going to prove that for you. You can just take my word for it. So seven choose three would be seven factorial over seven minus three factorial times three factorial. And then I can put that in the calculator, make sure you're careful on parentheses, or I can simplify this by hand a little bit. This would mean seven times six, times five times four factorial, right? On the rest, four, three, two, one. And I would also have this four factorial on the bottom. So I can see that those are gonna cancel out, so I'm not going to expand them. 
And then the three factorial would be three times two times one. So the four times three times two times one on top cancels out with that four times three times two times one on the bottom. And then at that point, I've got six on top and three times two on the bottom is six, so those can go away. And then if I look at what I have left, that's just seven times five. So it turns out there would be 35 ways that I could choose three ice cream flavors from a list of seven. Uh, the combination formula, I just gave you that, right? So we don't need that anymore. And now here's how I can use a graphing calculator to do those permutations and combinations for me. So seven, choose three is what I was just doing. And uh, I'll show you on the calculator. You're gonna go to the math button. And then you're going to go over to where it says probability, right? Find that probability menu. And you'll see that number two is NPR and number three is NCR, which means N choose R. So that's the command that you want. And I'll pick that. Now, if you're on um, some sort of uh, the math type, then you may, this may look a little bit different to you. It might actually show you the subscripts. Since it doesn't show me the subscripts, I'm going to go ahead and type in the first number first. So I wanna do seven choose three. So I'll type the seven and then math probability NCR and then three. So I'm saying seven choose three and then I'll hit enter. And it tells me that that's 35, which is the same thing that we just did with the formula. For the permutations, uh, that's similar, right? We said uh, our example was we wanted to do five permute three. So if I said five, and then I'll go ahead and go to math, probability, and I, I'll choose NPR because that's the permutations one. And five permute three is 60, which is just what we had gotten on the example. So that would be how to use a graphing calculator to find those. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, your binomial expansions revisited. Turns out the Pascal's triangle, in addition to all of the other things that it does, it also gives us combinations. So NCR, you can find by looking up the rth element from the nth row. Uh, and we start counting at row zero for that. So for instance, let's say I wanted to do four choose one. Then I would go to the row of Pascal's triangle that has the four. So this would be the fourth row. And then I start counting at the zeroth element, just like the first row is row zero. Um, the one that's on the left counts as the zeroth element. So this would be four choose zero, four choose one, four choose two, four choose three, and four choose four. So four choose one is that one, and so four choose one is four. Um, similarly, I'll give you one to try. Try what is six choose four uh, by looking at the picture. Hopefully you have an idea in your head now and let's check it. So we would find the row that has the six. So this is six choose zero, one, two, three, four. So six choose four is 15. And I think that that's, if you know Pascal's triangle, uh, a pretty quick way of doing it that you'll get the same answer as if you would do the factorial formula, but it's just a little bit quicker. So there you go. Have fun with your 10.5 homework uh, and best of luck to you. Sorry if this recording was a little bit long.